Hey, it's Kevin DeWitt here. Welcome to another plugin knowledge session. This week we're having a look at uh, Isotopes Ozone 8. So, this is a massive plugin. So, uh, similar to what I did with the Neutron plugin, if you've seen any of those videos, I'm going to break this one up into small components. So, this first one here, we're going to do an overview of the entire structure of just the the frame of the plugin, I guess you'd call it, as opposed to the components within it. So just the stuff that covers off the entire plugin and gives us the foundation to move forward with the individual components within Ozone because it is a massively complicated plugin and does lots of stuff. So Ozone 8 was probably primarily designed more at a mastering level than anything and I definitely do use it in mastering but that doesn't mean that you can't use it in mixing it's obviously quite capable of doing uh, mixing tasks because it has standard things like EQs, compressors, all that sort of stuff in there but the quality of it is definitely classified as a mastering quality and I guess the price of the plugin and the complexity of it is more leaning towards that style of uh, engineer there. And also the load that can be imposed onto your DAW system can be quite intensive. So it's not generally the sort of plugin that you're going to apply on every track of your mix or anything like that. That's why I guess it leans more towards mastering. Uh, it definitely is used quite a lot on, say, the mix bus or on some of your buses. And I use it in mixing generally for a targeted style thing where I have a particular problem in a mix and I will use Ozone 8 to, to try and fix that problem. But I won't just generalize and place it across all my tracks as, as a, like a channel strip with an EQ and a compressor and that sort of stuff. It's just too demanding for that type of function. And also it's, it's probably considered to be too clean. It does have some vintage components in it, but that's not necessarily what it was always renowned for. It was renowned for being uh, clean to the point of, you know, referred to as surgical and, and hence why it was used in mastering. And this plugin develops uh, new features every time they come out with a new version, and it gets better and better every time, but it also gets more demanding every time as well. If you have the advanced version of the plugin, then you can actually load the individual components like the EQ compressor separately as just individual plugins. But if you don't have the the, the top level version of Ozone, then you will be limited to um, using Ozone in its entirety and just loading the plugins within that. So you can't load them individually, which obviously uh, will put more load onto your CPU and that into your mixes there. So that's enough quick talking about it let's go and have a look at it and uh, run through the overview of ozone 8 okay so here we go uh here's ozone 8 all right and as i said i've got the advanced version so if you do have a copy of Ozone, you may not have the advanced version. This has some extra features, but it also allows me to bring up the individual components separately. So for instance, uh, if I was in this track here and I just typed Ozone, you can see that I can load each little component separately with the advanced feature so I could just load the equalizer if I wanted to as a separate uh, plug-in and it only loads that it doesn't load the rest of the features that come with it but if you don't have the advanced version then you'll be dealing with the entire plug-in like this and you're dependent on what modules you put in here 
So as you can see, it looks a little bit complicated, but there is a method to the madness here. So up the top here, we can put a little name in here, and that is going to come into play when we use some other features where when we use things like neutron and tonal balance and some other features and they get joined together and it can actually refer to the plugin. So, you know, you might give this a name based on the track it's on. So this case here, if it's on song 11, I might call it song 11. So when I'm using some of these features where you can utilize all of the plugins together in a, in a feature, then you might want to know what the names are. We have a master assistant, which we'll go into in another section here, but this is basically to allow it to do some analysis automatically of what the track it's on, the song or whatever it is, to do some automatic processing of it and make suggestions of what it feels it should do. And, you know, they even refer to this being a master assistant, that they are leaning towards this being uh, a piece of software for mastering, okay, as opposed to uh, mixing. But as I said, you can use this for mixing. It's just a highly heavy processing and uh, it's not necessarily its particular role. So we have some presets here so we can load up any sort of presets. So as you can see, we've got some instrument ones here, so they haven't ruled out doing it in mixing. All right, so preset standard feature there. We've got some undos and history and settings, etc. So on the top row here, this is where really it all comes together. Okay, this is where we load the particular modules that we want to function in Ozone. So we can actually take all of these away and this plugin will do absolutely nothing because it has nothing loaded. And as you can see here, here's all the modules that I have available to me in the advanced version. So I can pull up any of these and I can keep loading more and more and load up any of these I like. And then you can also move them around and place them in any order you like. Once you've got some modules loaded, you can turn them on or off with the little power button on each one here. If you wanna remove a module, you click on the X. And if you want to solo a module, you can do that. You can also load presets specific just to that one module. So the presets up here are for the whole plugin, which includes multiple modules. Whereas these presets here are specific to that module itself. You will see if we were to play a song, it's a little meter there, it's going to represent the audio going into it and things like that. We then have our main window here, which is obviously going to change based on the module that's loaded. So you'll see even things on the side here, they get changed, all of this. So this whole section here changes based on the module. And then on the side here, we have our meters and some uh, volume stuff here. So we've got our input here and we've got our output over here and we've got our levels. So we can increase the volume on the import or reduce it if it's a bit too loud. And we can do the same on the output so that we can balance it and allow us to bypass and unbypass. We can unlink the mod the uh, left and right if we want to so that we can set different gain levels for each we can change the the scope of the of the uh, rms peak value here or the meters so if we want to go to a more detailed in we can do that or we can go out wider to get a bigger range to see a lot more out of it we can do the same on the output. We can unlink as well and do that. We can bypass 
the entire plugin. Okay, so whereas before up here, we can turn off individual modules. This one here, we can turn off the entire plugin. We can also turn on this gain match here. So whereas I said we could make adjustments here, we can also just turn this setting on here and it will then automatically gain match the volume with the processing on and the processing off. So this allows us to bypass the plugin and not hear a volume change. We also have some advanced features down here. So again, some of this stuff is going to come more into play uh, if you're using this in a mastering style phase. So we have some stereo functions here. So we can click on this button here and it will sum the stereo to mono. So if we want to check our song in mono, we can do that. We can also flip the left and right. So if we want to see what it sounds like with our left and right channels flipped to the other sides, we can also do that there. Okay, we have a dither component here, so we can turn that on and off. We also have reference we can turn on and off, and codec we can turn on and off. If we actually click on the button here, then it will open the panel here. So we can see that by clicking on that, we open the dither panel. And I'm not going to go into what dither is, but in a mastering level, just briefly, we generally apply dither, which is a noise and we apply that when we are doing a bit conversion from say 24 bit down to 16 bit. And this is sort of a standard default setting that would come up here. So normally when you're going to output your project, you'll output it at 16 bits when you've mastered it to be placed on CDs or whatever else. And you'll apply some dither because we're usually working in 24 bit to start with. and we can change the settings to various things and it will show you a picture of how that looks. Okay, but that's the only time you're going to apply that is if you're using it at mastering and you're using it as your last step in the mastering process. Kodak, so if we click on Kodak, we can obviously turn that on as well. And what we get to do here is we get to hear our mix or our master in these formats. So if we want to process and master our file and we want to hear what they will sound like in uh, various Kodak, so MP3 or AAC and at different bit rates, we can do that. And we can also solo the artifacts so we can hear the impact that compressing our music to an MP3 or AAC is going to do. And reference opens up another channel again. So we turn that on and we can add reference files. So music so that we can compare our, our song and the processing we've done to a reference track to compare and make sure that we are getting things to where we want them to get to. So let's just quickly play a file and let's have a look at what happens on the screen here. So I'm just going to turn all these modules off. As I said, this is an overview. We will go through some more of these sections later as we uh, get time to do them. So we have a song. So I'm not sure why Gain Match did anything there considering that we haven't changed any settings and for some reason we're peaking. So as I said, we can reduce the volume, reduce the output, bring it up.
and you'll see there you get some movement on that there to indicate possibly what it's doing to the audio so if you put a maximizer on you can see we've got our audio up here so it's just a little meter there just to give you an idea of what is happening so as I said you can solo Turn them off, turn them on, whatever you want to do there. We can also change our meter type here. So we've got RMS plus peak is the default, but we could change this over to any style we like. We could change it over to a K system if we prefer, stereo or mid side. So if we'd like to see mid side, we can do that. And some other settings there. So now we've got it into a We've got it into a K system here setting, but we can change it back to our normal RMS peak, or we could just go with RMS or just peak or any of these here. So however you prefer your monitors, your meters to be presented to you, you've got that there. So just to give you an example of the mono and that, so there we've switched to mono, right to stereo, switch our left right. So there you go, that is Isotope Ozone 8. As you can see, it is an extremely powerful plugin, and all we've covered at the moment is just the overview of the structure of Ozone 8 and how it looks and uh, the the features that are consistent across it, no matter what plugin or component you're using of Ozone 8. Uh, I think this plugin is fantastic. And um, if you could definitely, if you can get your hands on it, then definitely do give it a try. If you can get a demo, try it out, see what you think of it. As I said, it's not your standard sort of mixing tool. This one, this is an extremely advanced tool. It is something that probably leans a little bit more towards the mastering side, but it is still quite capable of doing things in your mixes, but more at a level that is uh, targeted to specific functions as it is. Now, Isotope may not agree with me on that, but that's the way I like to use it. So anyway, give it a try. Ask some questions if you've got any in the comments there and let me know what you think. And hopefully it's been helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.